Pythagoras and Music by Soror Melanie Richards The musician draws the bow across the violin string, and immediately the inert atmosphere becomes vibrant and transparent, as if sound from non-spatial realms shines through a window into the world of space. What is being demonstrated is a phenomenon known as the overtone series, in which any tone, played or sung, activates a column of mathematically related notes which vibrate sympathetically with the sounded pitch and create resonance. Octaves throughout the universe respond in a modern, scientific, Music of the Spheres, echoing the hypothesis that dates back to ancient times. Until the Industrial Revolution, art, religion, and science were intertwined. The order of the universe was an ongoing study, later coming to fruition in the modern science of astronomy. But in the meantime, something fell away from science that had defined it for centuries a connection with mysticism. Pythagoras, the Greek philosopher, initiate, and teacher, stood at the point of the marriage of music science and mysticism. He was one of the first scientists, and as an initiate, he asked deep questions of the universe. Traveling to the centers of Babylonia and Egypt before settling in southern Italy, Pythagoras was likely exposed to ancient teachings about the power of number as well as subjects which sensitized him to ask those important questions. He was known to be a person of great knowledge and psychic power. Due to his higher nature, legends grew up around him, such as an ability to travel to celestial realms and actually hear the music of the spheres. The school that he founded went on to take his oral teachings to even greater heights, influencing every future era of Western civilization. If we ask why Pythagoras' teachings and discoveries were so far-reaching, we arrive at the beginning of the law that everything vibrates, a discovery which became a turning point for a new understanding of the universe. Pythagoras' mind, alive to possibilities, came upon a very simple theorem that had cosmic value. The legend is that Pythagoras, while walking past a blacksmith's shop, heard different pitches being emitted from the striking of the anvils. What is said to have gone through his mind was that the variation in pitches was possibly created by the different weights of the hammers. This story, possibly symbolically inspired by the legend of a magical blacksmith's hammer, may have a basis in fact. At any rate, Pythagoras began to experiment with musical overtones and ratios, which led to one of the most important discoveries of all time. In his search to determine interval ratios in music, an interval being both the space and the relationship between two sounding notes, Pythagoras employed the lyre and the monochord, a one-stringed instrument he may have invented, which featured frets on the fingerboard at various lengths. By stopping the string exactly at the halfway point, he produced an octave or a ratio of one to two. By dividing the string into various other lengths, intervals of the fourth and fifth were produced, and so on. Pythagoras and his followers conceived of the universe as a vast lyre in which each planet, vibrating at a specific pitch in relationships similar to the stopping of the monochord string, harmonized with other heavenly bodies to create a music of the spheres a concept which remained viable for centuries. Even though his theory was primitive, it serves to give us a picture which was later developed by philosophers such as Boethius, Johannes Kepler, the Rosicrucian Robert Flood, and in contemporary times by scientists working with quantum relationships. The theories set forth by Pythagoras are complex to those uninitiated into mathematical and musical analysis, but certain concepts are important to set forth here. Nicomachus of Gerasa, a theorist in the 1st or 2nd century Common Era, 
was an authority on Pythagoras and called himself a Pythagorean. In his Manual of Harmonics, he models his explanations of intervals, numbers, and the music of the spheres on Pythagoras' teachings as passed down through the years, and it is a good source from which to explain some basic concepts. The Pythagoreans found that the speed of vibration and the size of the sound-producing body were the factors in music that were regulated by number. A modern example would be the stringed bass, tuned to the lowest notes due to its size. Sound was said to be produced by percussion, or striking, followed by a vibration in the air, which was then received by the ear and carried, in Plato's words, to the brain and the blood and transmitted to the soul. The theory was that the vibrational frequency of a stretched string is inversely proportional to its length. This basic statement, despite the fact that the Pythagoreans had no way of actually measuring the vibrations of tones, so their method of assigning numerical values could not be relied on, laid the groundwork for the development of the science of acoustical physics. By assigning mathematical data as a basis for harmonious sound, Pythagoras was going against the persuasion of the day that pleasing harmony was merely a matter of taste and instinct. Working with his seven-stringed lyre and thinking of the divisions of the strings that he had discovered, Pythagoras realized that for the relationships to be complete and balanced, the perfect interval of an octave must be part of the existing scale. Because he had no way of numerically measuring the exactness of the divisions, we have to assume that he heard the sameness of the octave and saw the nodes that characterized the overtones. He then added an eighth string to the lyre to create this octave, an action not easily condoned at the time, as Greek society held the number seven as sacred and the addition of the octave disturbed the symbolism of the modes and the seven planets. However, Pythagoras is standing in the community and in the minds of his followers neutralized any censure that might have ensued. The original scale of seven notes contained a half-step, the smallest interval in Western music, after the fourth tone. When the octave was added, the interval that was created between the fifth tone and the octave would be dissonant and offensive to Greek ears. Although this theory is controversial, it is assumed that what Pythagoras did technically was to change the fifth note by making it a half step higher. This caused the two four note halves of the scale, known as tetrachords, to be separated by a whole step instead of a half step. This action preserved the value of the tetrachords, yet created the octave he was looking for. The original seven note scale sounded like this on E. If the octave E were simply added as the eighth note, the interval between the B flat and the upper E would be a tritone or three full steps, which is dissonant. So Pythagoras merely changed the B flat to a B natural, thereby creating a whole step between the tetrachords. <laughs> 